Fred Mark speaking in London, England. My experiences of Barber are so varied. Sometimes loving, sometimes the reverse when I've been away from him. The most vivid experience that I had in Barbara's presence was one day at Amanega in the ashram. All the others that were present at that period went out on the Charabang sightseeing, but somehow I remained behind and Barber came along and I felt that in the presence of Barber they were the most sublime moments of my experience in Barber's presence on earth. There were no questions to be asked, and we were alone. And I've always felt since that in quietness, Baba is to be felt. Very little is learned through words. When first I went to Barber, I went with an open heart because Barber invited me to go. And so I felt that him knowing everything, I could go with all my weaknesses, with everything that I was, knowing that he understood. And when I met him, Face to face, I felt here is God on earth. I forgot all about the West. And Barbara took very little notice of me among the others. There were 17 of us present at that period from the West. But I felt that all the time I was like a sieve that he knew everything about each one of us and everything and about myself included all at one and at the same time. Once he called me to him privately he didn't ask me a question. He said, You know who I am. I am the Ancient One. Once again, I am drawing my fisherman to me. You are very dear to me. On another occasion he said, Press forward. Do not think that you are being neglected. To be more accurate, he said, I do not want you to think that you are being neglected. Another time I was in physical contact with Barbara at the Darshan at Amanega 
when those thousands of people came to him. And for some reason, I was drawn to him, and I was sitting next to him, and I was given a cushion to shield his back every time he leaned forward to give each one prasad. I put this cushion to his back. He only had a sadra on nothing else. Very hot. Baba was perspiring. And this was to keep his back and shield him from any draught. Now during those hours I saw much of the service of that day that Baba served humanity with. Of that day that Baba served humanity with. The following day, my arm, I could hardly move it. So I wondered how Baba could go through that ordeal of serving those people, leaning forward, giving them prasad, having garlands placed upon him, thousands of them. And the work that he was doing, When I went to Baba, I went to him believing that he was and is God on earth. Therefore, there were no questions. But Baba did once I think caused me to ask a question. I sat there with the others and I was prompted to ask him, I said, Baba, is love limited to the form or does it go beyond the form? And Baba threw up his arms and he said, infinite. Infinite, he said. And that conveyed much to me. And I felt that Baba prompted me to ask that question for some reason to get beneath the surface of my consciousness. But before I met Baba in person, I believed he was God on earth before I went to India because of the work, inner work, that he had accomplished. It gave me the experience of feeling that he was undoubtedly the Saviour. I look upon Baba, I look to him, I feel that he is my personal Saviour. Not so much a guru or a teacher, but a saviour. I believe the world needs to be saved and I believe that it can only be saved not through teaching but one like Baba who has the power to save. If we ask him from our heart To be relieved of the burdens of life and the problems. Whatever they be, mentally, physically or spiritually, I believe that we can unburden ourselves in this lifetime 
Barbara has now dropped his body. And his work, although, as I understand, he has returned to his exalted place. His work continues intensively. And I believe this is the time for us to unburden ourselves with the things of possession, attachment, and whatever we feel in any way depressed or oppressed. The time came when I had a letter from Barbara. It was in connection of the time when he asked me if I would be obedient to him. And the time came some months afterwards regarding the work that I was to do for him. I was to work with Addy Junior in London to help him in his business. This was an act of obedience to Barbara. A letter was sent to me, and I read it to Adi. And the experience, through the cooperation, almost in partnership with Adi, often brought me in conflict with my own ego in obeying Baba. We are accustomed to loving Baba in our own way. That is good and proper up to a point. But often it can be the way of the ego. And mercifully, Baba brings us away from a tangent and puts us on another course, the proper and the rightful course, where we learn the lessons and which he alone knows is the way that that one can learn the lessons he must learn. Give us an example and give yourself that how he did that. Adi and myself both have love for Baba. We express it in diverse ways. But the time came for me to forget Baba and to put all my energy into working with Adi. I was learning from Addy, and Addy was learning from me. And Barbara was to be the coordinator of all the energy that we put into our efforts. So that the experiences that come through Barbara sometimes try us to a point sometimes of desperation. Some of the experience are full of bliss, joy and happiness. Sometimes they can almost reach a calamity when one's faith is tested. What Ever calamity befalls a Baba lover, 
he must not lose faith in himself. Baba is his true self. Each time that I've been to India or America, Baba has sent instructions that I was to go by boat. I did not understand the purpose of this, but afterwards I saw that it was for the work that I had to do on the boat. For instance, on one occasion I sat in the lounge on one of the piano liners and I saw people passengers discussing apparently a committee of people discussing some object they had in view and it turned out to be they were forming a sports committee the captain of the crew was there his name was Captain Christian I remember and I sat there on a lounge and there was one woman there talking over this subject and she pointed to me, he will do she pointed to me so I looked up she came over to me she said, you be the chairman of our committee so I learned it was the sports committee and it was something that I knew nothing about committees I'm not interested in I told her I said well this is not for me I said I don't feel any interest in it she said you she said no he him. she pointed to me again and insisted so I became the chairman of that committee and during the course of the sports session which occupied several weeks <laughs> I had to stipulate certain things make rules and consent to certain things regarding gambling and so forth these were against my principles and also apparently it was against the ship's rules principles and so they were ruled out by my vote but I saw the purpose of this I'm reluctant to join in in any organized work yeah. on another occasion on the boat I was traveling with Will Baggett an early English devotee of Barber's and his wife Mary asked me if I would take care of him she told me that she had given him a small bottle of Vic to smear his nose with because he often suffered from catarrh and slight colds now during the voyage on the boat I'm telling you this story because it's how Barber works sometimes I feel that we only see afterwards the result of something that has happened in which we are connected we were both in the cabin and I was going through some sort of illness I felt very low, depressed 
And Will was in the cabin too. I was looking out of the porthole. And I turned round, and when I looked at Will, he was he had a bottle in his hand, and he was smearing his nose, and it happened to be the ink bottle. And he was at the same time looking at himself in the mirror, and still smearing his nose. So I wondered what was happening, and I know that Will wasn't fond of a joke when it was against himself. So I got past him and walked towards the deck and I said, Will, what are you doing? And he thought he had the Vic in his hand and was smearing his nose with it. Well, this caused me convulsions of laughter and I forgot all about my illness. But I didn't let him see that I saw the joke of it. But when later we were in India, we were on a visit to Sikori. And uh, some of the disciples were held up by a breakdown. There were three of us present, I remember. Barbara, Charles Purdom and myself. And we stayed and waited for the others at a, a tea stall on the way. And Barbara said, they won't be here for some time yet. They won't arrive till the evening. T someone tell me a story. And I could never think of that story. When I'm with Baba, I feel that I can't ask, I can't speak. Somehow, I feel that Baba's taken even the power of speech away, or I have no use of it. So Charles Purdom got in with a story, told us stories, jokes of Barbara. I think there is one that you could tell him, isn't there, regarding... Yes, if I remember right, I, didn't, I think I did tell it to you well, years afterwards. Now, this was in 1954, when Fred, Will and Mary Brackett, Mr. Purdom and the others were with Baba. So when I saw them for the first time, Fred stood out in that crowd. He was tall and his personality was striking, so... And we have a saying in India, it is rather stupid, it's rather silly, but they say the taller a person is, the less he lacks uh, wisdom. So I made that crack in Gujarati to Baba. I said, now Baba, what about this fellow? Does it apply to him? So <laughs> Baba laughed and he said, no, it doesn't, because he comes to me with love in his heart, so no matter how tall he is, he does not need this sort of ordinary wisdom. He brings love with him. And that seemed to amuse Baba, and it wasn't a very nice thing, I realized afterwards to say, but it was said not out of any maliciousness, but out of love, because I was struck by his height and his personality. So this is one incident I remember. So this Lamba, so Bevakov, that means the taller a person is, the less he has wisdom, does not apply to you. That's what Baba made very clear. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, often the, the young people from America, I've never had it mentioned here in England, but the young people from America draw my attention to a photograph. So I will explain the happening which led to that photograph. It shows Baba with his the palms of his hands to my cheeks. It happened this way. It was during the day when Baba was giving Darshan to an endless queue of people 
But there was a moment when a woman, a very poor woman, put the least coin of value, known as a paista, at his feet. Now, Baba pushed this away into the sand and rubbed it into the sand with his foot. And then Baba stood erect and it seemed to me there was something at his feet. Now Baba pushed this away into the sand and rubbed it into the sand with his foot. And then Baba stood erect and it seemed to me there was something passing through his divine being, some kind of agony. And it so touched me that for some reason I was drawn nearer to him. And although the Westerners were near to watching, I went to Baba and he touched me on the chin. I ought to have gone on my knees because being tall and Baba was now sitting at this moment, I was still a head above his form. That is what I regret in the photograph. But Baba said, at the moment, he said to those, this needs no discourse. So it conveys a meaning to me. I don't know why I was drawn to Baba, but since that time, I often visualize Baba suffering in that position as he looked at that moment. It often comes to my mind and I feel myself standing as he stood. And often it comes to my mind what Baba was going through. I think it draws me nearer to him and to love him more and more.